Welcome to an Out of the Park 25 Beginner's Guide tutorial. There are two main purposes to this video. One is to provide a type of getting started guide to players new to Out of the Park since this game does have so much depth and detail. And two, to also talk about how I play the game so others who aren't beginners uh, can see some of the ways that I play and provide their own methods for playing in the comments. This is a video I've recorded for, I don't know, five years running now, and I think, and I, I enjoy going through how I play the game because then other people who have played the game a lot chime in with, with things that they do because there are so many different ways that you can play this game. Uh, quick note, if you enjoy this video, videos on my channel, please consider subscribing to my Patreon page that's linked in the description of the video. It's a good way to support the channel. Uh, but anyways, here we are on, in the manager's office. This is the screen that the game opens to after you've loaded or created a new game. And just a quick note about this, this video assumes you're playing a new standard game as GM and not in challenge mode, but all or almost all of these tips are applicable to many game modes, even if you aren't playing a stand standard modern day game, but that's what I have up here. So the first place that I'd recommend going is you click on your name as general manager or your name for the game and you go to manager options. And these options are gonna kind of be the first choice of how much you want to control and how overwhelming you want this game to be when you start it. Uh, I would, if you're just messing around, just getting the game, no, sh you know, getting into the game, no shame in saying cannot be fired. No shame in that at all. If you're just trying to trying to figure out the game, you don't want some jerk billionaire firing you while you try to figure it out. Do it. Do cannot be fired. Playing commissioner mode. Also totally cool to play in. It allows you to undo mistakes. You can do whatever you want. Like you can go in and edit players. You can, you can do anything. You can clone players. You can force trades. You can go over budget. So you can do just about anything. As it says, you have complete control over your game. It's almost more like God mode than commissioner mode. But if you are playing a sim to get a feel for the game and you want to be able to undo mistakes, commissioner mode is totally fine. Even if you don't want to be it in it all the time you can always come in to your manager's options and click commissioner mode to like undo something that you're like oh actually i don't want to do that so the team control settings here this is this is the meat of how much you're going to control as general manager of your team if you're a beginner setting lineups pitching staff and player strategies let your manager do it i think once you get into the game this is a really good thing to take over and because basically, just depth chart wise, lineups, I mean, lineups are, I think, less consequential than depth charts. Depth charts is more like who's getting the playing time. Lineup is just where they are in the order. Both matter. But uh, I, I would recommend eventually setting your lineups and depth charts and your pitching staff just because, I don't know, I, I like my decisions better than the AI's decisions. Player, player strategies leave as the manager for now. Um, I think you can leave that as the manager at all times. And then you can control individual player strategies if there's things you want to change. The development lab, a new feature in the game this year. My tip to new players is let your assistant GM do it at first. Or, or if you're not letting your assistant GM do it at first, do some practice trial runs with it. Read on the out-of-the-park forums, the out-of-the-park Reddit, YouTube videos, including one on this channel, that talk to you about the development lab. Uh, you know, I would I would not get too bogged down in learning the development lab first. I think there are more fundamental things that you need to learn in the game. Setting player development focus. Uh, oh, and let me just say that the development lab is only in the off season. So if you start a game and you're in the season, you're wondering where it is. It's only in the off season, uh, so it it won't be there during the season. Player uh, player development focus. I'm going to show you what that is. So say we have Byron Buxton here and you have a development tab. This is new this year. You can control what, where you want him to focus his time and practice with coaches. As a new player, I would say do not pay any attention to this. It's, it's too much detail to worry about when you're learning the game or if you're learning baseball rules, baseball roster rules. Don't worry about it. As, a, as an advanced player, I could go either way. You know, like it's, it's new. The game's only been out like a week at the time I'm recording this. I think I'll probably end up doing it for certain players in certain cases, but uh, I don't plan to do every, certainly not every player in my organization, maybe like my top prospects, maybe a couple guys that like, you know, say a guy has really high stuff, high control, but, or 
high movement but low control i might focus him on control but for the most part don't worry about that but don't worry about the um player development focus now we're getting into the stuff so so let's just let, i'll just change it to what my recommendations are for you here active roster moves this is your 26 man active major league roster uh control this i, I think this is one of the first things you want to get a hold of you can see your active 20 man 26 man roster by going to your team page then roster and transactions and this is your active roster and you can control uh, promotions and demotions putting guys on the il basically just who's on your roster transactions signing free agents releasing players etc i would control this this has a lot to do with who's on your active roster it has a really big impact on the direction of your franchise control this Initiate and react to trades. You want to be the one doing this. Don't let the AI control trades for your team. Uh, these are three very important things to do to uh, have control over your active roster and over your organization. So I recommend doing them. Same thing with drafting players. When you're in the draft, you, you will have an option to allow your scout to recommend players to you. I recommend using that, using the scout recommendation and then and then you control it don't let your assistant gm control the draft just listen to your scout if you're really not sure how to weed through the top players or weed through the players available um just just use the scouting recommendation and maybe then just like fish around for different players uh that you like based off it of, you know you can look at scouting recommendation by position so ask for recommendations at different positions and then look at the players setting budget scouting development ticket price i'm going to say control this this is over here in the front office, actually, sorry, player development. And this is your development budget, your draft budget, international free agent budget. Not gonna comment on these bottom two because something has changed in the game this year with how I normally play it. But I will say player development budget, um, yeah, I think have it at least at this baseline of 13.5. Ideally, 20 to 25 million is where I put it. Some people will tell you to put it way higher. Some people will say they play with it off. Some people will say they don't know what it does. I'm going to say 20 to 25 million should be your goal. But if you need to have it lower than that to make your major league team better, I think that's fine for, for some seasons, but not over the long haul. All right, where are we? We're at signing international amateurs. This can be a way to accumulate really good young talent in your organization, but they're also, the international amateurs are 16 when you sign them. There's a lot of, a lot more miss than hits with these it's you know weighted lottery tickets i'm going to say if you're new to the game and you're learning just let your assistant gm do it and then eventually learn uh what what this is about and how to scout the players and when you sign them and how much you can spend but overall don't don't worry about this for now if you're feeling like the game is too much sign and fire team personnel i'm going to recommend that you do this your team personnel page, you go to the front office and you can click personnel here. Um, this, is, this is your uh, major league. You're talking about your manager, your pitching coach, your hitting coach, your scouting director, your team trainer. These are some really important player, people in your organization. I have other tutorials on personnel from previous years. I've talked about this in other tutorial videos. I will do a new one about hiring personnel for organization in Out of the Park 25 that will provide more details, but there are other videos out there. In general, the first thing I say is get a scouting director who is better than this one. You want them to be like uh, good or better in every category. But again, that's just a really sloppy overview. Team trainer, same thing. This, this guy's actually not bad because he's not bad in any category, but I prefer guys who are better at preventing arm and back injuries. That's just like the TLDR on scouting and team, team trainer. And again, I'll have more videos on that. There are other videos out there. Um, bench coach and base coaches, you know, like honestly, they have less impact than these other ones. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, feel free to let your manager do that, but eventually take that over. Instructor roles, I'll show you where that is. Um, again, we're going to go to the front office. We're going to go to personnel. Oh, no, we're going to go to staff roles. Sorry. And that's who teaches catching. So it just shows you kind of this team is does not have very good coaches for uh, yeah Chase Tingler's overwork. This team does not have very good coaches for teaching roles. But I I think you can let the AI do this uh, early on if you're learning the game. I don't think that's a big deal to let the AI do it. But eventually take it over. Sign and fire minor league personnel. 
I think this this can be really important for your organization. Having the right coaches in place in the minor leagues, it helps with player development, and it helps uh, yeah it helps your prospects develop, which is really important for the long term health of your organization. But if you're just playing your first sim, let your assistant GM do do that and then come back to it. This is probably one of the more important ones to come back in terms of signing and firing minor league personnel. Minor league free agent signings and releases. Uh, you know, I could go either way on this, but I would say um, I would say maybe let your minor league managers do it at first just because it's so much to manage. Hopefully they're not going to manage a top, uh, you know, release a top prospect. Uh, they, they won't normally, but this is another one to come back to eventually. But I also think you can control this uh, a different way, which I'll talk about in a minute. Minor league promotions and demotions. So this is really intense. So you see you have all the, you have the complex, you have three uh, rookie ball teams, or I'm sorry, two rookie ball teams, and then A, high A, uh, double A, and triple A. This would be controlling every roster, which I actually, I've done at times, but I no longer do. So I would recommend letting your minor, your the AI do that, but with one caveat. Figure out who your top prospects are, and you can even let the, the game do that, right? Like you can say, okay, who are my top prospects? I don't always agree with these lists, but just use this to identify your top prospects if you're just learning the game. And say you're like, all right, Walter Jenkins, he's a top prospect. I'm going to go to his game strategy, and I'm going to lock him to his team. So now the AI is still controlling promotions and demotions for every player in your organization except for Walker Jenkins. So if you're new to the game, I'd say identify five to ten guys that you want to control promotions and demotions for and do that. Uh, I think as you get a hold of the game, make it more players. I would say in general, I'm controlling like 30 to 40 prospect promotions and demotions just because I don't fully love... <laughs> it's a really nice way of putting it. I don't fully love how the AI promotes and demotes. So for my more important prospects, I control this. Now, how do you remember where those players are? I mean, there are a couple ways to do it. You can remember off the top of your head, or you can do a short list. You can add a player to default short list, and then you'll have a short list, which those are here, right? Yeah, player um, search short lists are here. So add the players that you want to lock to a short list here, and then go to your manager's page and look at your short list there. Okay? All right. And then that'll, that'll have players there that you've added to the short list. All right, so Walter, we'll, we'll unlock you now for now. All right, let's get back to... I don't know why I keep hitting the back button instead of just going to the manager options, but I'm, I'm in too deep at this point. Uh, so yeah, let your, let your minor league manager or, or your assistant GM do that for now. And then control the dudes, just like the top five or ten dudes for now, and eventually grow that list so you're controlling, you know, 30 or 40 guys. Or control all of them if you want. I've done that before. It's just... It's a lot. <laughs> uh, minor league uh, lineups, depth charts, pitching staffs, player strategy, player development focus. Let your minor league managers do all of this, all of this, all of this. This is way too much detail for a brand new player of the game to manage, in my opinion. So I would not manage that if I were you. Now, there are some exceptions. Like if you see a top prospect is not getting playing time, Let's go, let's go back to our uh, Walter Jenkins guy. Say you've got him at A-ball, and for some reason he's not in the starting lineup, right? You can go to his set game strategy, and you can force start at whatever position you want, and then, then he's going to be the starter there on that team. But if he's not in the lineup at the level you have him at, it might mean he's not ready for that level, or there's a, a veteran blocking his path that you need to cut. But that might be a little bit too much detail for a beginner's guide. But I'm trying to keep it simple while also giving good nuance. So trying to walk that fine line here. Um, next, I want to tell you a little bit about the game settings uh, for Out of the Park 25 that I suggest paying attention to as a new player. So the game settings page, this is really where Out of the Park in a lot of ways comes to life i guess for lack of a better term i don't know that's just the one that came to mind comes to life let's go with that the game comes to life here because you can just customize so much about this game in game settings like you can just do whatever you want you can you can make this game whatever you want so the the headline here is don't worry about this if you're new 
also most years and i think probably again this year i try to put out a game settings tutorial where i go through this in detail to talk about how i play i would say for the most part man just leave this alone if you're new to the game there are a few things that i would recommend doing but i don't think it's make or break uh overall ratings i just don't like stars uh, I like 20 to 80 increments of five better. If you're not sure what the 20 to 80 scouting scale is, uh, just just put it in your internet browser. I won't say the name of the one. <laughs> just Google it um, or Yahoo it or Bing it, Mr. Jeeves it, whatever you need to do uh, to find out what this is. But do know that the 20 to 80 scale is a little different in this game than real life. So you could also do one to 100. Um, for the for the individual scale but we're I, okay I'm, I'm going off on a tangent I'm, st I'm starting to nerd out a little bit i'm gonna i'm gonna reel myself in and just say keep this as stars if you want if that works for you i don't like stars but if that works for you as a new player do it i don't like max ratings uh show the ratings over max i turn that off but hey if you're a new player don't worry about it but one thing i would turn off that i just don't like about the game is owner goals they're like a fun thing they seem fun like you know go out and improve us at this position oh go out and improve our whatever our farm system this much but like just the way that they work is a little strange to me and like honestly like i'm just i'm just here to win baseball games and if i'm winning games for the owner i don't want to worry about these little side quests that he sends me on so i play with them off now and i would i, I recommend you do the same i will say this button right here is pretty handy if you ever want to control your own lineups so if you remember at this manager options page, we can say if we want to control the lineups or not. Some managers, like especially like veteran managers, they've been around a while, they do not allow you to control the lineups or pitching staff as GM. They're basically like, nah, if I'm your manager, I'm in charge of that. But you can override that in the game settings. So once you've got the hang of it and you want to control your lineups and you run into a manager who's not letting you do it, just check this box right here on the front page of uh, game settings. And this allows the GM only users to always control the lineups and the hiring. So, oh yeah, because some managers would also be like, I'm going to hire my hitting coach and you're not going to be able to. Man, that's a one-way ticket to this checkbox for me or one-way ticket to getting fired. So that's all I'd really worry about on this page. Uh, players and team, oops, I've already have it checked. But the, the default here has the player personality rate ratings hidden on the player page. I think this is really useful information, and I think it's information that you should have. I would check this. What this does for you is say we go to, let's go to Carlos Correa's page. This uh, personality traits that are high, financial ambition and work ethic, would not show for you if you didn't have that checked. And things like work ethic and intelligence, having those high in players are really uh, good things to have because players who have high work ethic, work ethic and intelligence generally reach their full potential more than or even expand upon their full potential more than players with low work ethic and low intelligence. So that's just one reason that's handy. But I like I would recommend showing the personality ratings on your player page. Face gen and all this, I wouldn't worry about this if you're new. AI settings in terms of trade difficulty, again, would not worry about this, but just know that it's here. You can uh, change the trade difficulty, the veterans and prospects uh, preference, and a bunch of other things. Um, I think this reputation setting, I think you can go ahead and turn that off, actually. I turned it off in 24, out of the park 24 last year when it was new. Uh, because it just some stuff wasn't acting right for me. I never turned it back on. I'm, I'm sure they probably worked those things out, but I just, I don't know. I've played the game without it forever. And uh, it's one of the things I like about Out of the Park is they have new fe a lot of new features all the time. And if you don't want to play with them, you don't have to. You can just turn them off. So I leave that one off. Almanac, don't worry about it. Database, don't worry about it. League settings, uh, there's so much you can do here. I would really not worry about it too much. I would say a couple things. League settings, rules. I like to allow trading of injured players you can't trade players who are injured for more than seven days in this, which I get the intention because I think especially the AI, AI to AI trades, like they might make some weird trades with like, wait, you're trading for this guy and you didn't value him as if he's hurt for the last 12 months. So the AI probably isn't good at doing that. Uh, but if you police yourself and don't make lopsided trades due to injuries, I don't think that's a big deal. I like to play with that on financials. I would not worry about options man have at it like if you want your league to expand from time to time keep this checked if you don't uncheck it same with all these things you can control how much the league evolves um, this is the league evolution you can change the names of the league awards you can make a custom award 
Uh, I don't really mess with that too much. Players, as a new player, don't mess with this. In my game settings tutorial, I've shown things that I do here that I like, but I would say don't mess with it. Historical, don't mess with it. Stats and AI, you can do a lot of cool stuff here. You can change the roster settings. You can change the, the general strategic tendencies of uh, all the teams in the sim, but I would say don't worry about messing with that as a new player. One thing that I do think you should focus on Let's go back to our front office. You can notice a lot of things come out of this front office page, and there are other ways to get to it, these things, but this is just kind of like my hub that I use. Uh, scouting budget. Now, what do you want to spend on your scouting budget? I think that depends on your overall team budget, but I think 18 to 20 million is a, is a good, uh, good sweet spot here. Other people might disagree, uh, but I think I would one thing I would recommend is take down the major league scouting and take down the minor league scouting. And the reason I would say this is because you can depend on stats more than scouting. Um, I mean, not just stats. You can depend on stats in major league and minor league. But, you know, I know some of you out there don't necessarily believe in stats as much as I do. Um, and not that I believe totally in the stats, but the ratings are important. The scouting is important. But you have a decent scout. The major and minor league scouting are um, pretty accurate even with this low investment and you also have osa scouting to to reality check you on which isn't great all the time but you can check it so i recommend taking the the major and minor league scouting down because where you really 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 want to see uh your scouting money pay off is in amateur scouting and international scouting if you can consistently out scout and out draft teams in the amateur draft and in international scouting your team is going to be really good for the long term because you're consistently going to be bringing in young cheap players to your organization so i really recommend focus focusing the majority of your scouting budget on amateur and international scouting i'm going to show you a couple other pages where there's cool information info which is where they've hidden the the schedule page is here. I know some people are upset about that. I don't really care too much, even though the schedule page is where I spend a lot of time. But the team stats page is really handy. Uh, it just gives you kind of a barometer of where your team is in a lot of important categories and a lot of important stats. Like you can look at runs scored, runs allowed, your ERA. Uh, I think like defense is really important to look at. On base and slugging percentage are really important to know. Is your team hitting... A lot of home runs are not enough. Is your team striking out too much? This is just a good kind of like high-level gut check on your team of why they may or may not be struggling. It's not going to tell you everything you need to know, but it's a really good resource to come back to of a very high-level overview. Another page that might be handy for you if you go to your team page, logs, major transaction log. Now, I haven't played any in this sim because this is just a sim I started for this video, and I probably won't play any of this sim. But this will show you all the transactions you've made that your team's made, whether it's you or your assistant GM. This is fun to come back and look at sometimes and also remember moves that you've made. Or um, I, I use it to record videos when I'm just recapping transactions that I've made for people. But this is a good page uh, to come back to just to, just to see the, the work that you've done over time. I think another page that is just really cool to dive into when you, when you want to reflect upon or look at your sim sum is this history index. So this is the twins' entire history, but as you play out, your whole history will come in here, and you can see year by year how you've done in wins, losses, like postseason attendance. But you can also look at draft history. I mean, once you've played this game for five or ten years and you can go back and look at your entire draft, like this is a really cool page to go back and be like, oh, oh, right. I remember this guy I drafted ninth overall in the first round who didn't make it out of high A ball or, oh, right, I picked this guy in the 18th round and he's now a stud for me. This is a cool page. I like coming to it. The starters and registers pages are cool, but I'm going to skip over them for now and show you the leaderboards both batting and pitchers. This is your organization all-time um, single season leaders and all-time career leaders in a bunch of categories. And as you start to play your sim, all the stats that your players are accumulating count towards these. So if you play a 20 years with a team, you might end up with a player that you drafted who's a fictional player on these leaderboards. I like that a lot. So this is the front office page that I referred to and came back to a couple of times. 
I'm not going to go through everything on here and you can customize it, but, and I think this actually isn't even the default looking at it. I think something's off there, but anyways, this front office page is a page you should be familiar with. And it's a good, like kind of like that team stats page. This is a good page to have for like a high level overview on a lot of things going on in your organization that your budget room right here, very important to know these things all play into if your owner's going to raise the budget or not in future years. And like I said, you can kind of like customize these, right? If you want to have like your owner goals, which you should have turn off like I do, you can have them there. Uh, you want, you want to know your highest paid players for some reason. Cool. You can have that, uh, you know, just kind of figure out what you like and what, what information you want at a high level, right? Kind of like just pick out your KPIs. If you want to speak in some geeky corporate speak about it and, and, and figure out what you want here and just put that in. But I think this page is a, is a really good resource to know that it's there and to use this accounting page can also be important. Uh, look, I don't get lost in these weeds too much. I like a spreadsheet just as much as the next guy, but now to the park, I don't pay too much attention here. I basically just look at it and be like, all right, what is my owner planning on doing for next year's budget? Cool. He's planning to raise it 16 million. Thank you, sir. May I have 16 more, right? Like just, I don't think you need to do a ton here. I think another tab to keep in mind is the organization tab. This is, you can, you can, toggle all over the place here but when you want to promote and demote players this is one area you can do it like say you want to take this guy scott blew it because he didn't blow it and he was good say you want to take him from double a AA to triple a you can just be like boom there dude you're up there now if you need players off the injured list like once they're healthy you want to um promote them somewhere you can do that but uh this is you know you're not gonna be able to look at every tab but i think this over organization overview page is a, a place where i make a lot of my promotions demotions and transactions so just keep this tab in mind too what else are we going to talk about today i think we've covered enough i think that i could go on and on and on about little tips and tricks that i'd recommend doing but this is just a beginner's guide i have more in-depth tutorials about a lot of different things from the game some of them are, I mean, all of them right now. I don't have any out of the park 25 tutorials out right now before this one. I will have some more coming out, but what I'm trying to say is there are tutorials from previous versions of the game that are still relevant. So I have a tutorials playlist on the my main page, my YouTube channel. I have um, a bunch of tutorials from different years in the game. Go check them out. If, there, if there's something you don't see and you want me to make it on, just make a tutorial and just let me know. And I'll be making new ones this year, updating some, doing some new ones. Um, so, you know, just, just let me know if there's not something you, if there's something that you're wondering about that you don't see, and maybe I can get around to making that. Again, if you like this channel, if you like these videos, please consider subscribing to my Patreon page. It's the best way to support the channel. But either way, appreciate everyone watching and interacting and uh, have fun playing out of the park. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.